Welcome, my name is Jeff Smith, and today I'm going to talk to you about our new feature in SQL Developer Web, and that's our JSON interface for the Oracle database. So you can use the Oracle database to store your JSON documents. Um, there's two primary methods for this. You can store them as a column that you've marked as JSON for any relational table, and then use SQL over that data like you normally would. So you have all the power of the SQL language, but you also have the flexibility of a schemaless JSON document. Your other option is to treat the Oracle database as a JSON document store itself. So instead of thinking in terms of, say, tables and rows, I can tell the database, hey, I've got this collection, I have these documents in it, and now allow me to filter those, upload those, change those, delete those, all of that good stuff. So we have a REST API for dealing with this data and that's delivered via Oracle REST Data Services. And the name of those APIs is called SOTA for REST. Over here is a screenshot where I'm using the uh, query action via a post on a collection to get back documents that match um, this pattern. But what we wanted to do was to give you a, a user interface in our database tool, which is SQL Developer Web. So we've done that in the latest version of ORDS. Um, that looks like this, so I can now browse my collections, browse the documents in those collections, filter those, upload new ones, um, delete, make changes, and even diagram um, the schema, so to speak, inside those uh, JSON documents. So that's what I'm going to give you uh, an overview of today. Um, before we jump into that, just a few requirements. You're going to need the latest version of ORDS. You're going to need at least version 19C of the Oracle database. And when you log in as a database user, that user needs to have the SOTA role. And then that's going to allow you to see the JSON feature inside of SQL Developer Web. So here I am inside of SQL Developer Web. I'm logged in as HR and I have that role. So I can click on the JSON card. The first thing it's going to tell me is how many collections I have. And we are planning to add a couple of nice dashboard metric type um, widgets in here to help you have a better idea of just exactly what's going on um, in your database in terms of JSON. But over here to the left are my list of collections. So you can think of these as tables if you're a database person. Um, but as your app developer mind goes, okay, so I've got a collection here called examples. And when I click on that, I see all of the um, documents underneath. And if I click on one of these documents, um, I get a nice view presentation of this, or I can also change this to flat text, and I can change this data. I could also change this to form, and in the form view, can't change the attribute um, labels, but I can change the attribute values. And finally, we have the tree view. So in the tree view, I can do a lot of different things. I can get help adding new um, items to an array, for example, I can copy and paste, I can even rearrange things. Um, probably where I'm going to spend most of my time is going to be in the text view, and then it's also quite nice, I get some help um, when I've accidentally misplaced a bracket or a comma. So that's going to be my lifeline. But let's start from scratch. Let's create a new collection. So that's going to be this button right here. The only thing required to create a collection is a new collection name. Um, collection names, unlike Oracle tables, are by default case sensitive. Um, so if I were to go look at the data dictionary in the database, I would see a table over there called YouTube Video. Um, using this exact same case. Uh, if I care about how IDs are assigned, I could change that if I wanted to. Um, 
couple of other options in here, but I'm not going to concentrate on that for today. And when I click Create, it's created that collection for me called YouTube Video. It's over here on the left. And if I click on that, nothing's coming back. So this is sort of a worksheet kind of query interface. Um, this open and close bracket is basically the equivalent of show me everything. So technically, any document would match that pattern. And now what I want to do is add a new document um, to this collection. So one way to do that, I can click this button. And again, we default to the text view. So I can see what's what. But once I have that in here, I can look at the data this way. I think to be honest, when I'm not using the text view, my next favorite view is going to be the form view. So if I know his middle name, I can fix that. I'm going to click the Create button, and it's going to show up down here below. Based on the properties that I used to create the collection, I have the basically the ID um, of that document. Now with this selected, properties of this collection, and we can see that the assignment method is GUID. So this is, this is a GUID here. So if I click on this card, this comes right back. This doesn't make sense, but I could create another document. And then I have the two. Now, so these little slider dialogs that open, if I click the escape key, it'll automatically close it for me. Let's do a quick query. Um, so back here to my words examples. I have lots and lots of documents in here. Um, now, if I want to look at these in terms of cards, I can toggle this over to a tab view. And I've got 71, I think, documents in here. I can delete these if I want. Seems kind of harsh to delete data, but we can do that. Now, if you fat finger the trash can, we are nice enough to confirm with the double prompt. So let's use the query by example feature. So I'm going to look for documents in here that have this UPC code and have an item number um, for line items set to three. So with this query by example text inputted, I can click the go button. And instead of seeing those 71 documents, I now have these three. So if we copy this, open this, use the search, yep, we can see that string is in there. So I mentioned a little bit earlier um, during the slides we have this data guide feature. Now I already have one created, um, and those are done and used um, managed via search indexes. We'll just create another one. Now with that created, you know, when I'm looking at these documents, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. And what the data guide allows me to do is sort of have like a template um, of the attributes and how those are defined and if there's arrays, you know, what are in those arrays and what are the types. So what we've built is a visualization of those data guides. So that's this, and you can Expand these if you want. A couple different ways you can look at them. I can save that as a local file or I could print it. Um, a more interesting data guide. I think maybe I have one in here.
So you can see why maybe the popularity of this schema list design style is popular. Lots of flexibility for storing information in here. If you need help using the interface, we have two options. You can take a tour of the feature. So when if I click the if I click the binoculars button, we'll give you a guided um, tour of the entire interface. I can of course close that, and I can also just access the help by clicking the question mark. Query by example takes you straight to that official doc book. And like I said, it's not um, just the query interface. You can also control the sorting. So I would do that here, over here in the order by piece. That's a very quick overview of the new JSON feature in SQL Developer Web. If you have any questions, go to the official Oracle Docs for REST. So you would see that on oracle.com slash rest. That'll take you to the ORDS guide. And inside of that, we have a um, specific section just for SQL Developer Web. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.